Welcome back everyone. I'm going to do another video on some of the added programmatical uh, features I've added to my blaster. I've decided to do a video because I thought they might need a bit more explanation than just a couple of lines on a spreadsheet that no one's actually going to read anyway. Uh, so this is this video. This it uh, assumes that you have read, uh, read, watched the previous video which is about 45 minutes on features. Uh, so let's get on with uh, the uh, two new features that I've really added. So under flywheels, we have now got idle mode, uh, enable disabled, pretty obvious, let's enable that, and now it starts to idle. So that's going to idle at just over a thousand RPM. Uh, it, the ESCs do have um, protection, so you can stop the motors and the world does not come to an end. But uh, obviously, you can't really fire a dart like that because that's too slow. Look at it go! Yeah! We're gonna get there. Maybe. Just wrecking it all. Don't worry. There we go. That was fun. Proved the point though, right? Not hot. Okay, because huh, that's gonna be the first question about what happens if it if you put a dart through it so you can't really put a dart through it or, but jams theoretically happen but that's not the end of the world that is a bl heli setting obviously you need to enable that but that's been my default for ages the reason for idle mode is that the a lot of time spent in your trigger delay is waiting for the motors to spin up so if the motors are already going at a very low rpm then you have got less delay so to that point we now have under pusher two different delays one for idle one from zero rpm the idle one is is lower don't get too excited about all those numbers you can change them obviously and they're just ones i picked for this video which i've now done many times because i'm such a failure i'm trying to do this without um having to edit it okay so that is obviously that mode and we can turn that off So obviously the idea behind that is that it gives you improved response. The trade-offs is more noise, so there's not much schnicking going on <laughs> with that. And that'll obviously flatten your battery. So the advantage of turning it on in this particular way, like as a default setting, that frees up the rev trigger to do all of the normal things that you would normally do, like rev. Um, I've already turned it off, but that would work if it was in idle mode. High-low would still work and all the other features however under rev trigger i now have a new mode which is going to be idle mode so oh, whoops too far so idle mode means this now enables it and disables it so when it's disabled it uses the longer time to push and when it's enabled it uses a quicker time to push i see that as a feature for uh, people that like the idea but also want to do some schnicking around the place <laughs> so you can turn it on and off or um as as whatever is required so we have now also changed how the rev trigger strife mode works so let's put it back into rev mode which is the old strife mode okay so Historically, uh, whatever the pusher time was, we're going to go with 200 milliseconds. Uh, when you pull the trigger, and by the way, single trigger mode still works in strife mode. But let's say it's 200, so that waited 200 milliseconds then fired. Actually, let's crank that up to some crazy time, right? Uh, from zero delay, let's make that the maximum of 500. So that's implying it takes 500 milliseconds to spin up. So the only reason why I'd have 500 milliseconds is with the assumption it takes 500 milliseconds to spin the wheels up to full power before you push it, which hopefully will never be the case. And you can see what that kind of feels like now. I've had to color this in with a vivid. Uh, and same thing goes if we press the rev trigger, well actually not now, but before you'd have to 
hold down the rev trigger for at least half a second before it would, sh would shoot. Now, if you held the rev trigger down for the next 10 minutes, all preceding shots would be straight away, but it was a requirement that, that it had to be fully spun up before it would shoot the darts. However, uh, thanks to Foam Blast, who also helped me with the, the, the idle mode, uh, well, they finally managed to talk me into doing that, suggested that they really wanted to be able to not have to wait for the, for the wheels to spin up before it would shoot. And the rationale for that is that if someone jumped out of a bush uh, or walked into the room or around the corner, you don't need full power, so you don't need the full 500 milliseconds, you just need to shoot something at them and you'll probably hit them because they're close. So I've now changed that so you can don't have to wait the, the full time. So this is 500 milliseconds. And now with rev mode, you can pull the rev mode. Oh, yep, does work. So as you can see, it now no longer requires you to wait the 500 milliseconds before it shoots the dart. Now, the next question will be, well, um, how if I do them simultaneously, will it send a dart straight away? The simple, simple answer is no, because we don't want that. We want, as you've seen, if <laughs> the dart's even going, if, sorry, even if the wheels are going at 100, 100,000 RPM, it can't handle that. So we do need to spin up to an appropriate RPM. So without idle mode enabled then we give it 60 milliseconds so about 40 uh, to get going and another 20 to get to about 10,000 rpm before it shoots the dart so we can't jam the blaster because obviously we don't want that now as i've implied if you have the previously mentioned idle mode running then you don't have to wait for the wheels to spin up you just need to increase the RPM, so I'm giving it 20 milliseconds to shoot if idle mode is going. And yes, that does mean that in the heat of the moment, you can get a dart off in 20 milliseconds, although you could say there is some time it takes to push the dart, which is true, uh, but that is still massively faster. The other reason they mentioned that uh, they wanted it is for potentially reduced FPS. So we've just kind of concentrated on how long it takes to shoot the dart. Uh, and we have mentioned that the obviously the wheels are going to be going slower. So therefore you're going to get less FPS. But that does mean you can theoretically do a low powered shot at someone by timing the, the trigger pressure um, pushes perfectly. Now I think you'd need to be using my blaster quite a lot to get the feel for how, what kind of timing that is. But you could also not only just use it for um, getting the shot off quicker, you could also use it for delivering a less powerful dart to someone if you actually wanted to, like a small child or whatever. So that's the, the, the big changes uh, all around trying to re increase responsiveness of the blaster. Um, we're going to make a whole bunch more changes. Uh, hopefully we're going to have the flywheel the world. Uh, solenoid which should be quicker and we're going to do some make some other changes hopefully if they work out um, but that is the changes so hopefully you've enjoyed that one uh, join up patreon there's heaps of work to be done that's for sure and all costs money uh, hopefully you've liked that one and made one of my blasters all right guys i'll see you on the next one Bye bye